Yo, what is up, pussies? We are back with another episode of Mogcast. Episode number 24. We are on 24, but really briefly, we, we, we want to talk about the last podcast. Also, this is a Saturday. We're doing this Saturday morning, so you guys are seeing this same day in the evening because, you know, um, Hannah... It was my birthday. Yeah, Hannah came in um, for his birthday, so they were kind of busy, and we didn't want to force a podcast. So. Thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. Sush got me the... Sush got handed the ticket. Yeah. It's an easy gift. I was like, bro, it was, it was such an easy gift, like, but it me- meant, it's a yeah. lot. It means a lot, you know? So it's Well, like it was a toss-up between a bonsai tree, uh, what's that? What's um, the, a bearded dragon. A bearded dragon and Hannah tickets. Yeah, because he wanted a bonsai tree. You guys know those trees? Wait, you you just, you just said it best, like well, genetically I, modified or some okay, shit? Okay, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure what they do with bonsai trees is they take a full-size tree and they either genetically modify it or they cultivate it in a way where it literally looks like uh, what a full-size tree would look like, but it's just like a foot or two tall. Yeah. But it looks like a regular tree outside. It's pretty but sick. They're like $1,000. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay, well, I can get him that or I can get you a bearded dragon, <laughs> like which is those lizards. But and you asked me, you were like, hey, weird question, but for your birthday, would you want a bonsai tree or a bearded dragon? And I just started laughing. I know. And but then I ended up just getting her getting Hannah lights because that's like, bro, it's it's a good gift for you and also her. So, yeah. But we wanted to jump right in about yeah the last podcast. Yeah. What's going on with Australia? Because we caught some heat last podcast, not much. But some people were like, oh, it's not that bad here. Get your facts straight. Yeah, do your research and shit. Don't talk about like shit that you don't know about. And we have. We've done our research. And I think what happened is because I got a lot of DMs that were saying, bro, don't don't listen to people that are living in, I think, Queensland or like different parts of Australia have different C word restrictions. So there's some parts that like aren't that bad. But the parts that are bad are like super bad. And there were guys that were in the parts that weren't bad that were saying, oh, it's not even that bad here. You don't know what what you're talking about. But then we got hundreds of DMs and comments of people saying, no, it is that bad in the bad parts. And it's like, so what Australia did uh, in 2019 or 2020, something like that, is they basically eliminated a lot of protesters rights but at the time people didn't really know or care or notice because there wasn't anything to protest about back at the time and in america there's a lot of protesters have a lot of rights here i mean what's it the first amendment first amendment yeah is the right to peace peacefully assemble but in australia i i think it was 2019 they were like, they eliminated a lot of the protections that protesters have. And now you're seeing these videos. That's why you're seeing these videos of like people coming out and protesting. And they're just getting fucking annihilated by police. Like getting bear maced in the face. Even though they're not being half as, you know, rowdy as some of the protests we've seen here. And they're getting like beaten the fuck down. And there's guys that are like, what did I do? What did I do? And they're just getting fucking curb stomp yeah and it's like i mean i'm seeing it with my own two eyes you know like i'm not i'm not making that up i'm watching it happen yeah so yeah i'm sure there's some parts that's fucked you can't even you can't like pro peacefully protest in australia to be fair i don't know exactly what protections were stripped away but i know that some were but at the time people were like "Eh, whatever and because there was nothing going on you know but um Something that recently happened that I saw circulating a lot, and I did fact check this, was in certain part, I think it was New New South Wales or something, um, because it's super locked down there, you can't like leave your house to go to work or anything like that. So in these animal shelters where dogs were being kept, the, the workers that normally take care of those dogs weren't allowed to show up and take care of them. So the the cops came and shot the dogs to death, like just killed the dogs because it's like no one can take care of them. So we might as well just kill them. Yeah. I saw people were saying to talk about that. Is that, is that like actually true? Yeah. Like that's actually in that's cold actually blood. True. Just fucking shot. These yeah. Dogs? Yeah. Just killed the dogs. I mean, to be fair, 
even though that's like really not fucking fair, but to be fair, I don't know if these were no kill shelters or if they were pounds. And I mean, if it's a pound, it's still fucked up, but it's like, it's a kill shelter anyway. A pound, they usually kill the dogs after a certain amount of time anyway, but it's more humane. They like give them an injection or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fucking brutal to just show up and yeah, just, and they just, just do you know if they just left them there or what? I have no idea. They had to have, cleaned. they probably cleaned them up. Yeah. I doubt they just went to each cage and just went boom and, and fucking just, walked away. Holy shit. That's actually brutal though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And think about the workers like who've probably like spent yeah, like a yeah. lot of time with these dogs and gotten to know them and then they just get fucking killed. Yeah. Pretty awful. But moral of the story is like, yes, not every part of Australia is that bad. But another thing is that like, the culture in Australia is different from the culture in America. And there's actually a lot of people, it's like fucking Stockholm syndrome or something. A lot of these people in Australia are like okay with the restrictions. And they're like, oh, well, at least we don't have any COVID over here like you do in America. And it's like, bro, you have no life over there. I mean, you can go outside for one hour. I mean, wait, mark, mark it down at like 840 because you just, you said... Oh, I said the C yeah, word. Yeah, he said it. So Fuck just eight forty. Hold on, it down at eight forty. We'll mute. Yeah, it. hate to see it, yeah. but um, yeah. So the the whole culture is different, and I guess at the end of the day, it's just a matter of opinion, like how much you're willing to put up with. But for me, it's like I'd rather not live in a little sheltered box, you know, not being able to see my friends or go outside or go to the gym, and it's like, oh well, yeah. at least we don't have C word here. Well, it's like that's how it was last year. Like, where I was in, I lived in Georgia at the time, and, like, like Georgia's obviously really, like, very liberal when it comes, when it came to the C-word. Like, yeah. they didn't, kick, they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. So, everything was, like, open and stuff, so I'm going out and doing all this shit, and then... Liberal is in the actual definition yeah. of liberal, like, yeah. open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, they're conservative, like, they're far right or whatever you want to say, but... um, And then, like, I'm walking around, like, no mask, whatever, literally in, like, the like the worst part of like everyone was on lockdown and shit. Yeah. And then, you know, you go to like California or something where it's like super, it was super locked down. Like yeah. you couldn't leave. Oh, everyone's wearing masks. Yeah. So it's like, it's the same shit. It's like, there's going to be different rules and different areas. Right. And, stuff. right. and in, and in California, again, since the culture is different, a lot of the people there are actually like for the restrictions. Mm -hmm. They're like locked in their house and like, or, you know, not locked in their house, but, they have to wear a mask outside to like yeah. walk outside, but they're like, they think this is good. They're like, oh, well, we're going to have less C word here. It's like, are you though? Bro, I was actually all surprised. The, all the places with the highest restrictions have had like the worst, at least death rates, maybe not cases, but have had the most deaths. So I was surprised because I was just in California and when I was in. Like, I thought it was going to be way worse than it was. Yeah. And I think it may have just been because, like, where I was at, um, there was a lot of, like, younger people. So, obviously, they don't care as much. But, like, no one's wearing a mask. Like, like I was walking into places that had, like, the mask. Like, you need a mask, right. but I didn't have one. And I just, like, kind of walked and they in. Just and, don't they, care. and they didn't really care. Yeah, I think so that's the way it is. It just, like, it really depends. And, like... I mean, I didn't really see, I mean, I would see a couple people like wearing them outside, but like, I didn't see anyone being like super anal about it. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. I think, I feel like, bro, I feel like the like media wants us to think that it's like super awful. Yeah. And everyone's like super restricted. So that becomes like the mainstream. But then when you go to a lot of these, places, like I, w yeah. I went to California thinking, bro, this is going to be like super hard. Yeah, Everyone's yeah, yeah, going to yeah. be wearing masks. I'm not going to be able to do anything, but like. No, people didn't like people didn't give a fuck. Bro. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of you have to think like a lot of these businesses, they're owned by people like you and me. Yeah. And if we opened a business and the government said you have to put this sign on your door that says everyone has to wear a mask, we'd put the sign up, but we wouldn't enforce it. You know, yeah. so a lot of these people, it's like they're just regular people that own businesses. They don't really give a fuck. The people that walk in don't really give a fuck. So it's just a mutual understanding of like, we don't actually care about this. And there's some, there's some police precincts that have been like, they've received order from the government to like enforce psycho shit. And they've just simply rejected it. Like I know, I think it was the Toronto 
police um, disobeyed the order to like arrest people for breaking lockdown or whatever, or it was either breaking mask mandate or breaking lockdown. The police literally just said, we're not enforcing this. So figure it out. Like, what are you going to do? Send in the feds? Yeah. Like, we, we refuse to enforce this, which is, I think, the way that it should be, you know? Yeah. The, the cops be- are the ones that actually are going to be putting the hammer down and enforcing the law. And if they say this is not constitutional, we're not enforcing this, then the government literally has no power to do anything about that besides sending in the feds, which... Yeah, which I don't know, think they would do. I don't think there's going to be armored tanks like rolling <laughs> down the street to enforce mask mandates. But I just got COVID, actually. And uh, I didn't think that I had it just because it just felt like a regular cold for the most part. Actually, it felt a little less bad than a regular cold. And I kind of got... I mean, the worst symptoms were just like overall sinus infection, like nose was runny and stuffy. I was blowing my nose. I was like, okay, this is fucking annoying, but whatever. And I got over it in, I had one day where the symptoms were like pretty bad, like just annoyingly bad. And then the next day it was like 75% gone. But then the day after when the symptoms were almost entirely gone, I noticed that I couldn't taste or smell like I went I had a completely clear nose at that point and normally when you get sick and you can't taste it's because your nose is clogged but this time it was different it was weird my nose was completely clear and I went to eat a chipotle bowl that I've had a thousand times and couldn't taste anything and I was like oh shit (laughs) and then I like picked it up and smelled it couldn't smell anything I was like oh shit so (laughs) <laughs> but you have it back now, right? Oh, yeah. It came back. But for some people, I know that with Kenny, it took him like four months to get his smell and taste fully back. For me, it came back after like three days. But well, I'm confused. Okay, so you had it and then like you had it and I was here. Like I wasn't in, I wasn't in LA, like I wasn't in California at the time. Yeah. So you had it when I was here. There's no way that I didn't grab it from you, bro, because we're like. In close quarters yeah, we're and in, stuff. Yeah, and, and yeah. so I, well, I, lately my nose has been a little runny, but I don't know if it's like, if it has anything to do with, with C word or what. Yeah. Wait, did I say the C word again? Yeah, I you might did. Have said it, it was at 13 minutes. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> but. <laughs> All right, I'll write it down. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think I have symptoms or maybe I have it, but I just don't have sim- I'm not showing well, you symptoms. Well, took, you took Cialis as well, which can give you a stuffy nose. That was a big mistake is that I took Cialis while I had what I didn't know was C word. I just thought it was a cold. And then I took Cialis and it like doubled my nose stuffiness. That was awful. But I told Hannah, I was like, we were on FaceTime and initially it was going to be a surprise. Like yeah, she we was were going to fly yeah, in. Yeah, she was going to fly in. We weren't going to tell James. So it would have been like a dope, like, holy fuck surprise. Yeah. And I had, I really didn't know. I yeah. thought like, oh. oh, you were like, you wanted to go to LA. And then I was like, no, don't go. Yeah. That was the only thing. Cause I wanted to go to LA the dates Hannah would have been here. Yeah. And then you were like, I can't tell you why, but don't go. But even then, I didn't really think it was Hannah. I figured I that like, would have given it away. I thought that you, I don't know, th- throw me like dope Project X party <laughs> for like a whole week. I wasn't sure. I was just like, okay, he's got something planned. He can't tell me. But when I told Hannah that I had C-word Project symptoms. Project X party. That's funny. When I told Hannah that I had C-word symptoms, she was like, oh, damn, that sucks. Okay, good night. Got to go. And I was like, all right, good night. And then she immediately FaceTimed you yeah. and was like, oh, shit, James has C word. And you were like, OK, I guess we got to break the news then because he's got to get tested because I wouldn't have gotten tested. You know, like I was already over it at that point. But I was like, oh, yeah, I think the sickness I just had was C word. But I'm I'm over it now. But she can't catch it because if she tests positive when she goes back to Canada, they make her quarantine for two weeks. And she has to start work and stuff like that. So she was like, okay, I can't fucking catch this. Called you. You said you got to break the news. And then she's like, okay, listen, I still want to come and visit you, but you have to get tested. And then I got tested. Like, Well, you tested positive, right? Yeah. The, and the closest date was three days later because the urgent care is here. Like, you can't walk in anymore and... I called one of the urgent cares and I said, hey, it says 
that I don't need any appointment to walk in and get a C word test. Is that true? And they're like, no, because it's a, a C word red zone now. We're like, I think they said something along the lines of we're handing out less tests. Um, so there's like less interaction with potential C word positive people for safety reasons, which is kind of ass backwards. Yeah. If you think about it, you'd want to test more if yeah. it's a red zone, but long story short, I couldn't just walk in. I had to make an appointment, drove to the CVS, put the swab up my nose, dropped it in the little box. And then it said positive. And that was after I'd already basically gotten over it. And I was like, damn. But then I texted my doctor and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I got over C word. Like at this point it was like five or six days since I'd felt symptoms like five days. And he was like, when's your girlfriend coming? I said the 26th. He's like, yeah, she's completely fine. So I'm over it. But what's weird to me is that we've shaken 500 hands since we moved here, maybe more. (laughs) Maybe a thousand yeah, hands dapping up people, Dap training people up, with them, like coming up to them and like doing the full like yeah. pat on the back, fucking breath being exchanged, you know, and just all the sweat and grime that has been exchanged. At the and gym. we went to Mexico. We yeah, went yeah, yeah. To, you went to Miami. Yeah. And what's even crazier is that I went to Dubai with Hannah back in December and every single person in her house had c word while we were there now it wasn't when we got there that they had it it's not like we were showing up knowing we're gonna walk into a fucking hazmat zone it was after because we stayed there for two weeks and like by the end of the trip that's when everyone started to get sick with it and we were like okay we're fucked Mm -hmm. like there's no way because after a certain point it's like okay everyone in the house has c word most of them are like symptomatic. If we got it, we got it. And if we don't, we don't. So I'm not going to like not hug her mom goodbye and stuff like that. And I'm not going to not like shake people's hands and be like, thank you for having me. Because like if we got it, we already fucking got it just by being in yeah. the same house as them. And we tested negative, bro. We tested negative. Well, was, it a good, was it a good test? Like did they swab it up? I mean, good? yeah, they went all the way up into here. They swabbed it up good, and neither one of us had any symptoms. So the only way that that would have been possible is if we both happened to get false negatives and we both happened to be asymptomatic, which I doubt. I think we just straight up managed to not catch it somehow. And then randomly, two weeks ago, I catch it, and I haven't even been in like close contact with anyone. I've just been like mostly training alone, mm-hmm. maybe shaking a few hands here and there, but I don't know. All I know is that shit, I got over it in, like, two days. <laughs> yeah, because you're, like, a strong, like, bro, you got a good, you're young. Yeah. 22. 22 now, yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. But, I mean, if you look at the obesity rate by country compared to the death rate from COVID by country, it's, like, a one-to-one correlation. Like, you can overlay the two fucking lines. The more fat a country gets, the, the more COVID deaths. The more percentage, oh, yeah. The more <laughs> 21. Ah, fuck it, bro. I mean, are we going to say fuck it? I don't know. Uh, I don't actually I'll know if it, it fucks with the views. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, surely we got to be able. It's a pandemic. We got to be able to say the words. It's not like we're even saying anything bad. Yeah, we're not. We're just saying if you're unhealthy, you're more likely to die from getting the C word. You know, no, who knows, bro? But yo, I mean. A lot of people were saying that China was lying about their C word numbers. Like, oh, no way saying they only had underplaying it. Yeah, yeah, like underplaying it. But then again, it's like China, I'm pretty sure their obesity rate is like 7 or 8% versus the US, it's like 40. You know? So are they I'm actually, sure it's higher than 40, bro. Maybe. I the number I saw was 40, but let's let's play a conservative and say it's 40. That's still like yeah. 5 times hot or 6 whatever times higher than china so maybe china's not underplaying it maybe they just have a healthy population that's able to like get over it and i know a lot of the the um african countries where people are like always outside eating whole foods that they actually have to cultivate themselves and just like constantly moving and exercising the death rate there is like extremely low as well well their dude their immune system is probably already Mm -hmm. like 
so strong because where they're at, like they have. Yeah, they're interacting with microbes all the time. Yeah. And their immune system is just on some trend shit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. they're just like, I don't know. It's like kombucha, bro. Like, <laughs> like they're probably drinking kombucha and shit like that. Yeah. And that's why this is bro science. But when you're, well, this part isn't bro science, but my conclusion from it is, is that when you're a baby or if you have a baby, you're not supposed to like take stuff out of their mouth when they're playing with it. Like babies, their instinct is to take stuff and put it in their mouths and like get the germs from it. And it's not just because they're babies and they're stupid. It's because that's their instinct for their body to like build their immune system up. So it's trying, yeah, yeah it's trying to get as many bacteria and little viruses that the immune system can easily fight off so that it can like build your immune system up. Is that and true? Yeah. Well, it's true that that's what happens. Their immune system gets stronger from putting shit in their mouths. And I'm pretty sure it's true that that's like baby's instinct too. I know that, or at least I've heard from parents that like, you're not supposed to take stuff unless you're going to like choke on it. Yeah. That's different. But if they're like chewing on this can and they're clearly not going to choke on it, you're not supposed to like take it out of their mouths. Cause they got to, they got to become acclimated to their environment and get a bunch of different like microbes. So their immune system can become extra fortified. Damn. Yeah. That's interesting. Parenting advice on Modcast. We had some parenting advice last time. I, don't, I forget what it was. Yeah. But, dude, I wanted to talk about... Um, Can I hit that? Yeah. Um, they... They... We were... I trained at Zoo. So, I trained at Zoo when I was in LA with uh, with Lex. And um, there were so many... There, a lot of people were upset. Did you see any of that? I just want to say... What's crazy is when I was first coming down with C word, we were sharing vapes like it was fucking yeah, yeah. nothing. Like I, you like, pick one up, I pick one up. We wouldn't even know whose it was. Yeah, and that's like that's like mouth to mouth kissing, contact. Bro, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So swapping saliva. And yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. So I don't know how. You, maybe you're just naturally immune, but you haven't been really sick every time. Yeah, bro. I'm never like, since living together. I think this is the third time I've gotten sick. And I remember a while ago, like four or five months ago, we got the same bug and I was down and out for like three, three days. It was pretty bad. Five days. I was sick overall. And you were over it in like one day. Yeah. I think I it's Asian. Get... I think it's Asian people are like, <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure that's true. Isn't it? It could be. They have like stronger immune systems or some it shit. It could be. I don't know. It's all the kimchi and shit that I eat. <laughs> like I was, I was raised on kimchi, but yeah. So I was at, I was at zoo. And Lex did a video. I didn't end up filming just because I was so busy. But Lex did a video, and so many people were upset at the fact that I was at Zoo because, like, I've done all this this shit talk about Zoo, like fuck Zoo culture oh, yeah. and shit like that. And, and you know, it's it's like partly a joke. Yeah. But I and you've said that you've addressed yeah, it like it's just a joke. Yeah. Uh, it's just like fake beef or whatever you'd say. But I did go there. And I'm not going to lie, I'm probably never going back again. That place was fucking garbage. Wait, why? Dude, okay, well, first, it was $60 day pass. So, the fuck? Yeah, $60 day pass. I think I've heard that before, but that's crazy. I didn't know that was The true. only good thing about the place, it, well, I don't know if it was Lex's camera, because Lex has a really good camera, but the only good thing about that place is how it looks on camera, um, just with, like, the black walls, and it's, like, pretty well lit. Right. But also, it's all down light, so it just looks really good. And Alpha like, gym type beat. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. red and black, so it has a really good aesthetic. Yeah. That's, and, like, corrupted strength. Yeah. Russ's gym looks so sick in Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. So, same shit. But, yeah, with $60 a day pass, bro, like... Well, the way that Lex puts it is it's more for, like, a power... Like, it's more of a power lifting. Like, they don't have much bodybuilding stuff besides free weights and, like, a few... Machines. Like cables and machines, yeah. He, That's weird. He says me. it's shitty for bodybuilding, but really good for powerlifting. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, because Brad is more like bodybuilder, if anything. Yeah, but he's also like strong as shit yeah, too. Yeah, But um, yeah, people were like upset about me being at Zoo, and I'm like thinking, guys, it's just like it's a gym. We had to go to the. We had we wanted to go to Gold's. We were gonna go to Gold's Venice, but I was in. I had the the Huracan. So Gary's Lamborghini, he gave it to me the whole day. So I was driving this thing, and I had to, like, return it to him, but, like, Lex wanted to train and shit, so we we couldn't go, like, 30, 40 minutes to Venice mm -hmm. to train at that Gold's, 
So we just like really went really quickly went to zoo because Lex lives really close yeah, to it was zoo. Like a forty minute session. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like mm-hmm. yeah, forty minutes, and then we just trained real fast. So we had to go to zoo. Yeah. But if it were our choice, we wouldn't have. I mean, Gold's Gym Venice is like the mecca. Right? Yeah, and he says Gold is obviously fucking fantastic yeah. for bodybuilding. And Jeff side trains there. <laughs> yeah, fucking Lex met Jeff. That is insane, dude. I can't believe Jeff posted that pic. I know it's he like is the, the weirdest. Not in a bad way. He's just the, like, I can't figure Jeff out. <laughs> I have no idea what he'd be like in person. I don't know if he's on, like, if he's just always, like, on something or or what. I hope he's doing all right. Yeah. I mean, he seems to be happy. I think, like, dude, I dude, my per, purely based on knowing fucking nothing about him personally. So this is 100% yeah, yeah, assumption. Yeah, yeah. It seems like he the just. The quick disclaimer. Yeah. It seems like. He just made a bunch of money from being like the most aesthetic guy on the planet. And now he's young and he's rich as fuck. And he's just like, he's just chilling. Whatever. Yeah. He's just chilling. A couple of my protein ads and then it's it. (laughs) Dude, I, dude, the amount of drugs in the fitness scene is actually kind of absurd, bro. Really? Like you would think, I feel like you would, like anybody else would think, yo, like no way these, like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying Jeff is on drugs, (laughs) but I'm just saying like in general, um, like stories and stuff and and you can kind of tell sometimes when mm-hmm. people are like you know whatever wired or whatever but the amount of drugs that like a lot of these huge influencers and stuff it's like mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of backwards you think that like the fitness people are like super healthy and shit well from the outside you're thinking right outside yeah, yeah. like oh these guys have such a healthy lifestyle but like everyone's on like gear and shit and mm-hmm. i mean you could be healthy about gear but you know what i mean right I mean, no one has, like, adequate su- sleep and, like, just partying right. and shit. Yeah, I mean, we know a few names that we can't drop, but some of the big guys in the industry, there's one guy that is uh, very, uh, very, actually, I don't even want to give any description, but all I know is that he does, like, Adderall and Vivans every single day to, like, get more work done. Yeah. And it's, like, a lot. It's, like, a lot of Adderall. I've been really good. I've been, we were actually talking, we were talking about Adderall the other day. I mean, I hope Eric doesn't mind Madrid. I hope he doesn't mind me telling the story. If you're listening, Eric, hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, he, I gave him, um, we had split an Adderall. It was, we, so 50 milligrams each. And I was like, yo, like, do you want to try this? Cause he was about to edit my video and he had never edited it on Adderall. And he was like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Like it, he was like, Making sure it didn't do anything bad for him. I don't him. think he'd care about this story because Madrid's actually, he doesn't really do drugs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He He's, just does Delta 8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he he took this, he took 15 milligrams and he said that it was just like making him feel so good. And then 15 is a decent amount, yeah, bro. Yeah, but because I gave him a quarter once prior, like a, a month or two prior, and he said he didn't feel shit. So I was like, oh, okay. really? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll give you half. So 15 yeah. milligrams. And he said, like, he like, found himself just like randomly doing dishes and like being very productive and then and like enjoying it but yeah also like he was laughing at random he's like was laughing by himself like just being so happy like he's just on his phone like laughing well that's why it's dangerous because like it it makes you feel the way that you feel when you're having a perfect day Mm -hmm. like you can feel the way you feel on adderall if you have a fucking amazing day and like everything goes your way you see that your fucking paycheck hit, you, you know, like a bunch of good stuff happens to you and you just feel really good. That's what Adderall kind of feels like. It doesn't necessarily feel super artificial. So that's why I think it's dangerous because... Yeah, it's very natural. Yeah, because you don't think to yourself as you're on it, you're not thinking... This is the Adderall. This is the Adderall. Exactly. You just literally feel like, wow, this day is going so well. And then if you're more experienced, you can be like, this day's going so well because I took Adderall mm-hmm. and I need to like relax, you know? Yeah. I've only been taking it. I'll probably take it like once a week, I would say. Yeah. Like I try to limit myself to once a week that way. I still have a tolerance and I'm not like, I don't get dependent on it, but I do have like an addictive personality, but I don't like something with Adderall. It's like, cause I was doing it, but I was doing like a, probably a quarter, like every other day, maybe. So like yeah. three, four times a week Is that for cutting. No, that was like, Bro, that was like a while ago when we were doing like podcasts um, at the old house and shit. 
But I was doing it like three, four times a week just because I was like, ah, oh, I got it. That or all sitting around, yeah. you know. But then I stopped because I saw like people were DMing me like, bro, like that's a very slippery slope. Like mm-hmm. you should really chill. And so I did. So now it's only like once a week, if that. Yeah. But I took it. So, I mean, mostly the, the, the cats out of the bag. When I went, I went, I flew into San Diego. I meant, I meant to keep it low key. Mm-hmm. Um, but like Lex put it. In, at the end of his video, he was like, yeah, Sush, Sush, Sush went to San Diego to see a friend. So I was just like, okay, well, I might as well just, like, talk about it now. It doesn't really matter. Um, but, yeah, I went to San Diego to see a friend. And it was, uh, like, obviously, first time I'm meeting this this person. And I took um, I took a half. I took 15 milligrams of Adderall. Oh, it was a half? No, it was it was a little bit more. It was like, it was like I don't know. Three fourths of a half. So what is that? Oh, okay. So less. <laughs> yeah. So less, less than, than a half, half, but more than a quarter. Okay. So like ten mix. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Probably ten milligrams. And so I took that, and then I also had like a couple of beers at the airport while I was waiting. You were the most charismatic Dude, man. Yeah. On the planet. I had I had unreal game, bro. Like <laughs> I had. I was Dude, just. I just anyone listening, where I like. I'm not hyping up Adderall. Don't fuck around with Adderall, all right? We're making it sound like it's a miracle uh, drug. Yeah, that that's very true. So don't yeah, don't fuck around with Ad, what the fuck? Don't fuck around with Adderall. Um but it does it does like really help you uh Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie and be like, "Oh, I take it, but you shouldn't." Yeah. I will just say and this is complete honesty. It's very slippery slope. Like, it is one, it is slippery slope especially if you have a somewhat addictive personality and two, even for me, I would never get addicted to Adderall because I just, I just, I, I don't know. It just, for me, I can take it and not feel like addicted to it, even though I like the feeling of it. But I do notice that if I take Adderall two, but mainly three days in a row, and then I don't take it the next day, I will have the worst fucking day ever because I think the reason is it like down regulates dopamine receptors. So then I wake up the next day, I got no Adderall, you know, pumping dopamine into my brain and I just feel like shit. Like, I think that's w- like a worst day ever. That's probably what happened to me today. <laughs> cause I took some yesterday, um, before the gym cause I was so beat and, and then I was like, oh, fuck, well, I don't want to take some today. So I yeah. didn't, but like now I kind of do feel like a little bit groggy and shit like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, just like groggy, just not all the way there, you know? Yeah. But I don't know who knows, but yeah, that's the, I definitely think if you take it like every day, you're definitely going to get, like, well, that's what well, happened, gave, bro. That's what happened to John, because John has talked about it. Well, John said that he smoked meth. Yeah, publicly he said that. Yeah. I'm not exposing him. He like literally said that, didn't he? Yeah, he was like addicted. He was addicted to to a bunch of shit. But then he was like, when he was off meth, he's like, he'll take Adderall and stuff, and that's why he has such a hard time gaining weight. Because mm. one, he has a fast ass metabolism. Because he's got he's got like a hypo response. Like I don't know hyper hyper response. Or hypothalamus, Hypo- hypothyroidism, or hyper hy- yeah. hyperthyroidism. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he's got like this crazy high metabolism, bro. Like he's got to eat five k to gain weight, and <laughs> yeah, we're retarded, bro. Yeah, <laughs> hypothalamus. <laughs> I almost said hypothalamus, and I caught myself. Hyperthyroidism. Yeah. Hyper- okay. Hyperthyroidism. So he's got this crazy high metabolism, and then when he takes his Adderall, it just shuts his appetite down, and then he can't eat. And he's not gaining weight. That's why he's on yeah. the eternal shred. Yeah. Like, homies lean year round. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that's because of the Adderall, but it's just, like, his metabolism is so fast. Yeah. And then you you add on a stimulant like that that's going to crash your appetite. Yeah, you're fucked. Bro, but to me, like, Adderall doesn't... My appetite is fucking crazy, so, like, Adderall... Doesn't affect him yeah, much. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah. affect it. Bro, well, it's, it's dose-dependent for sure. Yeah. But I if mean, I were to take, like, fucking 60 mg... Like, bro, I remember I took 90 milligrams... In college. Of Vyvanse or Adderall? Vyvanse. Okay, so that's about, I think, 30 Adderall, which is a fucking lot. Okay. So I took, yeah, so I took 90 milligrams of Vyvanse, and I didn't eat for like 12 hours, bro. But I was in college, so it's a little bit different. You were probably focused on work, too, Mm -hmm. but still I was studying and shit, yeah. I didn't sleep. Because Vyvanse is extended release, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, because I I couldn't sleep. It was fucking terrible, bro. Jesus. I mean, I gave some... Actually, yeah, I don't think he'd care. I gave some to my dad, kind of at his request, but also at my recommendation because he has ADD worse than me. Like, he's just a space case all the time. 
And I'm like, listen, I'll give you like a half dose of this Adderall I got. It's like extended release and just see if it like helps you focus. And I think it did. He was doing like yard work and stuff and he was more focused, but (laughs) he went out on like a lunch, like he went out to get lunch and beers and stuff with, with his friends. And I'm sorry, dad, if I'm exposing you right now, but I think this story is so fucking funny because I've been there. He ordered a plate of Brussels sprouts, like the super nice bougie Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And for him, one of his pet peeves is when someone takes your food without asking, especially at a restaurant. Yeah. It's just like disrespectful. And my dad got this plate of Brussels. (laughs) He got this plate of Brussels and, um, his friend, one of his friends, before my dad even took his first bite, his friend just started like picking them off his plate, eating them, and got through like a quarter of the fucking plate. Holy shit. And my dad <laughs> like freaked the fuck out. Well, he didn't like scream at him, but he just gave him one of those like, all right, I'm not fucking dealing with this. That is so disrespectful. I would never do that to my friend. Stood up and walked out. And then on the, on the way home, he was like, Damn, I'm never like that. What the fuck? He's like driving so home that's realizing. The Adderall? Yeah. And he was like, hey, he told me, he's like, hey, that Adderall, like, it definitely helped me focus, but I don't think I can take it again. I freaked out on so and so for uh, stealing my Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? And he told me that story. Cause it just, it can make you on edge a little bit. Like, it, it can make you happy, but it also just overall makes you more intense. And if he wasn't on it, He probably would have just noticed that and been like, come on, man, don't take my food. But while he was on it, he was just like, this is so fucking disrespectful right now. Yeah. Well, you said more intense. That's why you like, like, it's like also a sex ped. Like you were were talking about Adderall or sex and on Adderall. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely. Yeah. Some of the best sex of my life has been when both of us are on Adderall. The only downside to it is you have to compensate with a lot of Cialis. And even then sometimes it's not enough. Adderall is like very vasoconstricting. It constricts your blood vessels. So you need just to get like 90% boner, you need at least like 15 mgs of Cialis. And that's ju- that's not even to get fully hard. Dude, that's but, probably why I wasn't that vascular yesterday because I was like, damn, I thought it'd be more vascular because I took real Cialis. Mm-hmm. But then I, re- I just for now remember I took a seven and a half milligrams of, yeah. of Adderall. And it'll constrict. But I still your- had like a really good pump. But- right. Yeah, that makes that, sense. The pump is more like fluid mm-hmm. versus vasoconstriction is more like blood. Yeah, that makes but sense. But yeah, in terms of the, like, you're just super intense and it's an aphrodisiac. I think that's the right word. Mm-hmm. Like, it just makes you more horny. Is it aphrodisiac? Yeah. And uh, I think stims in general are, like, um, especially ones that release dopamine. It's, again, I don't want to hype it up too much, but like, holy shit, bro, the... You just get so into the sex. Like, you're so fucking in the moment and just hyper-focused on every little thing. Yeah. But the only downside is bad boners. So, but it also makes you last fucking forever. I'm really hyping up Adderall. Yeah, you are. (laughs) You are. Just take the pox, guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been doing... I've been on NoFap for... I'm doing no... I'm starting NoFap too, guys. Let's go. He convinced me. He was like... Because uh, the, my friend from San Diego is coming this weekend or next weekend. I'm going to do semen retention because you said that your semen retention has been insane. Yeah. And now your sex is like 10 times better. Yeah, but wait, tell, wait, are you going to tell the stories? Uh, yeah. Well, I won't get Briefly, into too much yeah, detail, yeah. but I did no fap for like two and a half weeks. And... Dude, shout out to Solbra again. I mention him every podcast, but he was kind of the one. I think someone DM'd him the clip of me mentioning him on the last one because I don't think he watches us blabber on. Yeah, he's probably like these these idiots. Yeah, these fucking kids. He's as like (laughs) as high enlightened as. Yeah, he's like fucking there meditating. He receives a DM. It's like a clip of me. But I saw a post of his a while ago that was saying like semen retention can unlock like higher levels of sex or something like that. And I'm like, ah, this fucking guy, like, I don't know about that. But then I thought, you know, maybe I'm just saying that because I'm too lazy to actually do it myself. Maybe there's something to it. So I've been doing no fap, which is easier. I mean, just not jacking off is easy ish. 
Actually, it's really fucking hard now that I think yeah, about it. Yeah, it's pretty hard. But, um, especially on gear. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I did that for like two and a half weeks before Hannah got here. And luckily, I found out that she was coming. Because honestly, it was getting so difficult that I w- probably would have relapsed. But then I found out she was coming because the the C word thing. So, I decided to keep it up. And then... I figured, okay, I'll keep it up until she gets here. But then obviously, like, once she's here and we have sex, like, it's GG. But then I thought, maybe not. Like, maybe I can just continue retaining and see how that goes. (laughs) And I fucking did. I had to take 60 milligrams to poxetine, which is a fat dose. That's a whole ML, right? Yeah, that's two MLs. Okay, fuck. Two MLs. And I took... Uh, I use the pump as well, but not enough to like make my dick look fucking bruised and stuff. Bro, really quick, really quick. I want to say, listen, if you guys are getting Depoxetine or um, Cialis Tadalafil from Amino Asylum using Code Jam, I had a Thanks, DM. Bro. I had a DM. This guy said, do I just drink the whole thing? No, you have to. I don't know if amino. It comes with an oral syringe. Okay, so it comes with one. You have to use the oral syringe. So whatever the dose is. So let's say the the, the Tadalafil is twenty milligrams per. It says it twenty milligrams on the thing. That's per one ml. So that's how you do it. Do not. That's, that's one oral syringe full. Yeah. So, so it's, don't drink because I'm pretty sure this guy DM, like he DM me. He was like, "Do I just drink it? Is it a one time use?" And I'm like thinking, "Bro, you're gonna. F- I don't know. Fifty dollars for one time use. Yeah, you're getting also, fucking scammed, bro. Also, what would, what would." A that would thousand be- milligrams of depoxetine due to you, bro. <laughs> you wouldn't come until 2022. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay, and another thing, and this is really important, with the Tadalafil, which is Cialis. Cialis is the brand name. Tadalafil is the actual drug generic name. You have to shake it before each use because if you look through the glass at the side of the bottle, um, you'll notice that all of the actual powder has sunk to the bottom and the top, like, three quarters is just clear liquid and in order to actually the actual cialis is at the bottom so you have to shake it pretty good for like 10 seconds until it forms like an opaque solution yeah it comes like and then yeah it becomes like a whitish liquid and then you draw it out do like half an ml or whatever but anyway so i did 60 mg depoxetine and i used the pump for like 10 minutes because what the pump can do is it gives you like a little layer of water retention around your dick to actually desensitize it a bit because I noticed like by the end of the two weeks not to get TMI or anything but I noticed like everything felt good Mm -hmm. like everything just felt hypersensitive and I just knew I I literally am gonna last two minutes yeah without any assistance see that's what I'm scared of bro so no depoxetine depoxetine plus the pump I'm too I lazy went for the pump. For about 30 minutes, but I I still could have I still could have finished if I wanted to, but I was pacing myself. And then it got to the point where it's like, all right, wrap it up, like finish. And I was like, nope. And I just pulled out and fucking put my pants on. Dude, that is absolutely. I literally you still haven't I had a full a full orgasm. I haven't yet. had a full orgasm in uh <sighs> like three weeks now. Jesus, bro. I can levitate. Yeah, that's actually nuts. <laughs> Yeah, but I felt like, surprisingly, I didn't feel super insanely, like, um, frustrated. I didn't feel, like, super frustrated afterwards. I Because I felt so, in the most egotistical way possible, I felt like a fucking king amongst men. Yeah, you texted me. I literally texted <laughs> yeah, you, you after, you and like, I said, Bro. <laughs> I said, I am a god. <laughs> and I was, And that was it, because I was just like... I just fucking stopped. Yeah. Yeah. So, and also, the sex was really fucking good. Yeah. (laughs) I won't get into detail, but like, guys, if you haven't tried it with your girl, I mean, especially if you're long distance, because if you're not long distance, actually, no, it doesn't matter. If you're doing semen retention, it doesn't fucking matter. It makes the sex so fucking good, but you do have to take depoxetine because you will... If you don't, you will not very fast. So, dude, when um, little side note there, Code Jam. <laughs> pretty. This is this is not a fucking Depoxetine ad, guys. I'm being serious, bro. Well, pretty recently, 
um, with with uh, my friend. I so we had sex, and then I uh, like I finished, but then bro, literally like like I would say ten seconds later, like I just cleaned up really fast, and then like immediately started going again. Yeah. So I mean that's like drugs and stuff like <laughs> like trend and yeah and i was going to say you're chemically enhanced bro yeah and that was like a little bit of cialis as well yeah so i don't know go like mul- yeah. multiple rounds i mean you were saying you were too lazy for the pump this devolved into sex talk real quick but you were saying you were too lazy for the pump and i get that if you're actually trying to do like penis enlargement like permanent penis enlargement that shit is a hassle. I just don't I know if lie. I'd be able to be like, yo, wait here for a sec. I'm going to go in the bathroom for, in the shower for 10 minutes. I yeah. guess that's not too bad. You can sneak away if you try. Yeah. You can sneak away. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that is kind of funny. If she were to walk in on it, that would be kind of yeah. funny. But and I'm like here with this fucking like vacuum suction cup. And you're thing. like, I'm listen, like, it's just for this experiment. I'm trying to desensitize <laughs> myself. No, but it also really helps with blood flow, too. Like, you can go ape mode for, like, fucking five minutes straight, just nonstop, and you don't lose any bone or strength at all. Bro, you would think... Because it's like having a pump. Yeah. Like a like a muscle pump, but in your dick. You would think that girls would like you not to come fast, but with this particular person, she doesn't... Like I was like, yo, like do you like I'm gonna take like some of this depoxetine thing, like it's just gonna help me not not come. And I'm I thought she'd like totally be on board, but then it was like she was totally the opposite. She was like, no, do, don't do that because blah blah blah. And I think it's like we've never talked about something like this, but I think it's like an ego thing for her, hundred percent. And it's like a, it's low key a shot if I you know it's like 30 plus minutes or whatever and i don't yeah. she's like am i doing something wrong or like am i not hot enough or something right right so i think like you do have to maybe not, don't ask your girl but like if you're gonna start maybe start lower and then like slowly like bump up the dose yeah with the box the poxetine dose so you get it's more like natural i guess right if you take like 15 milligrams that's pretty because if low. you're if you're if you're having sex natty with no no peds yeah, and then all of a sudden you you do a sixty milligram depoxetine, and you don't come be, for an hour. Yeah, and she's gonna be like, "What the fuck? Like, <laughs> you, are you not attracted? Yeah, to me she's anymore? like, "Are we gonna break up?" <laughs> so, yeah, I'd be careful with that. And that's what <laughs> that's what Hannah said. As she was just like, "Wait, can you not or or what?" And I was just like, "Nah, I just don't want to." And she was like baffled. She was like, "What?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, no, I'm good. Just put my pants that's on." Fucking she's like, insane. What the fuck? I wouldn't be able to do that. I, there's no chance I'd be able to do that. You, dude, you feel like a god after though. You do feel like, holy shit! I, if I can resist that, I can resist anything. Yeah. Like I have the strongest willpower on the planet. And also, I would just feel, bro. I'd have blue balls, and like I'd be. So I didn't. Insane. I didn't. And that's what I was worried about too. But I didn't for some reason. Have you ever had real blue balls? Oh, bad. But but were you natty? Yeah. I think it's only a natty thing. Really? Because. I oh, because we don't we have small we, balls. Our balls are like well, not. no, I've I've had somewhat bad blue balls on gear, but not not nearly as bad as yeah, when I was natty. When I was when I was natty and I had like a regular set of balls, like yeah, I had these terrible blue balls oh one time. It gets like, into like your belly. Yeah, it's like, like you it have hurts a stomach your ache, stomach, bro. bro. And it's I can horrible. walk. <laughs> yeah, I know. That shit is real, bro. Blue balls is real. I always thought it was a joke until it happened to me. Yeah, the first time I got it was just from like kissing and stuff. Yeah, same, same. And then I went back to the hotel and i <laughs> dude it was just they so bad i like, sat down on the toilet and like not not to get tmi again but like pre cum was just like dripping out like it was pee it was, there was so fucking much and i was like sitting down and i was pushing like i was trying to pee and it was just like blocked. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And my stomach and balls hurt so fucking bad. Well, all my homies at the time were like, bro, just like rub one out. You'll feel a lot better. But like I couldn't. I, oh, really? Yeah. Like I it, like I couldn't. And then when I did finish, like I didn't feel any better. Yeah, like, same. It was just like there was no, there was like it didn't even feel good. Yeah. It just it it was it's still there. Blue balls fucking anyway, sucks. we got we got some questions we want to get to. So well, wait, I want to talk about real quick, bro, because so many people have been ta- telling me to talk about um. This TikToker, his name is Ephraim, and I know you guys probably know who he is. Um, 
And I get like tagged in his shit all the time. And it's like, bro, you got to talk about this. So I'm just going to briefly sum up what I think about it. I think that, well, one, he's not very, he's not very smart. He's setting himself up for failure. I don't know anything about this this guy. So this kid was like super skinny and he started like bulking, right? Like a regular bulk. And then he was doing like, bro, he's literally gaining like three or four pounds a week. Um, just doing like eating like 5k calories and he was talking about how much calories he's eating and then the the thing that the reason why he's becoming talked about is because all these influencers on tiktok all these fitness influencers are telling him like shout out um i think his name is i think he did a video the ripter they did a video on him or he did a video on him and it was like it was like Bro, Ephraim, you're going to get fucking fat as shit. Like, this is not good. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. But he didn't listen. And, like, he's seen it. Like, he's seen it. Was he he lean before? Yeah. uh, I I believe he has autism. So, I... I, Actually, I'm, like, 100% sure he has autism. So, he had autism, and he was, like, really skinny. And then he started, like, bulking. Like, really skinny. Like, Mm -hmm. probably sub-10%. But he had not much muscle. so, So, you couldn't really see anything. Um, but like he started putting on this crazy amount of weight and like, like low key, like he did make shit ton of gains. Um, he also added a lot of, but then he started just getting super fat and like, you can see his training videos and stuff. Like he kind of like, he doesn't really know what he's doing and he's getting all this advice from these people, from these TikTok people. And he's just like brushing it off. I don't know why, but he's just brushing it off. I also, this is like, this is very touchy. Um, but I, but I think that he could be like, like he could be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I think it, it may, may have something to do with the autism where he doesn't want to like hear anyone else's opinion. And like, I don't know. He just also like started this whole mog thing on TikTok, like mog talk. He calls it like, he's got this like mog, sh- mog merch and stuff. And then he'll comment on my shit. Like stop mogging my feed, bro. Like, and he like, dude, he like goes to these public areas and then he'll just be like, he's wearing this stringer and like these same green shorts, gym shark shorts, and it's the same fit every day. And he goes to like these public area and he's just like, ah, oh. it's just like, dude, first of all, it's, shit's not funny, but then he well, gets hyped another, up. He gets another... hyped up because people like people like, I don't know if he knows pe- everyone is making fun of him, Yeah, but Ephraim, bro, if you're listening, no one is laughing like with you with you. like they're laughing at you, bro. Like, and it sucks to say, but you know, that's yeah, what's happening. that's unfortunate. And I don't know if he knows that or not, but he's getting like the views. So I guess he's probably well, it's kind of like it. Jason Genova type beat. You know, Jason Genova. I don't. He's a, an old, not old, but like he's been around and I'm not sure. I still haven't figured out Jason Genova. I don't know if he has real autism or if it, it's just for the camera but it seems like he has real autism and a lot of people, it was the same thing. Like a lot of people are actually real fans of him and like him, but then there's also another cohort of people that are like just making fun of him and making jokes at his expense. But I don't think he knows, like he doesn't know that. And like, bro, someone's got autism. That's kind of fucked. Yeah. That's really fucked. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I haven't heard of him, so I can't really comment on that, but just wanted to say that real fast. Yeah, and then we already covered this because someone wanted us to talk about the penis pump, but we already basically talked about that. But I was I was just going to say to you, because I don't think I finished, if you are using the pump for, like, permanent gains, that's a fucking hassle. Mm-hmm. But if you just use it for, like, five or ten minutes before sex and you don't go super hard, it's just, like, you know, half <laughs> vacuum, <laughs> then um, that just gives you a little extra girth. Yeah, and it just improves blood flow and makes you last longer so work it i need some help in the girth department if i'm going to be completely honest so maybe well you can use the you can use the pump but you're too lazy so i don't know what to tell you bro (laughs) right you got you got the you it's not that bad i don't need the i don't need help in the girth department that bad where i have to actually do the yeah do the shit but i did try like fucking i was probably good for like half a week and then i was just like okay bro yeah you did yeah. You were like, bro, how do I use this thing? Because it looks like a fucking torture device. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't I don't use it anymore because at this point it's like, 
it's done its fucking job. It worked. So now it's like, I don't have the patience to sit there for 20 minutes anymore. Bro, shout out Kurdish Prince real fast. Uh, if you're watching, if go ahead and DM this clip, DM, DM him this clip because I know he'll be happy. But shout out to Kurdish Prince. He put us on. This is totally unrelated, but he put us on to this oh, Phillips. Yeah. Is that thing sick? Body, I used yeah, it yet. bro. It's fucking insane. It's like really? this body. It's like this one blade body trimmer, body hair trimmer. And he had a TikTok on it that went pretty viral. Not viral, but it went like really hard. He had like 50K on it last time I checked. And he just like really quickly, he's just like, yo, what's up? Like if you guys want to fucking shave your body, use this. And he like went like this really hard and fast. And it just shaved off his hair. Like he didn't look like he even yeah. flinched or anything. And I was like, bro, like I need to try this. So we ordered it on Amazon. It was like $35. Bro, shout out to him because that shit is crazy. Like I'm about yeah. to use that shit everywhere. Wait, does he have a code? No, it's just on Amazon. Oh, okay. He wasn't paid to do that? No. He just did that because why not? Yeah, he was Damn. like... Because his whole thing is like really quick videos. It's really funny. He's like, sup, bros? Like, it, like, what do I use to shave my body hair? It's this thing. All right, peace out. Like, that's it. <laughs> and like, it, like, yeah, so shout out him. So, but yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that, but... I mean, we used Manscaped for a while. Manscaped was good, but I Dude, never... Dude, the 4.0 was like, I overcharged mine. I didn't know you can overcharge it. Yeah, that's got to be a design flaw, bro. Yeah, that is. Manscaped. Like, it stopped working when you overcharged it. Yeah, I I guess I charged it for, like, three hours too long, and I literally couldn't turn it on. Like, it would blink because it was overcharged. The lithium battery was overcharged, and that's I waited, like, two weird. days. Waited two days, bro, to see if it would, like, maybe drain some battery or something, and then yeah. it would start working, and it didn't. So, so we it just, just, returned it just it. stopped working. We returned it to Amazon, and then I got a new one. That works fine now. Oh, the new one works fine? Yeah, the new one works good. Oh, shit. I just don't, char I just leave it like one bar charge, so, because I don't want to overcharge oh, it. Oh, damn. But then I also have the Phillips thing, which is like only one blade, and I do yeah. that for like more precise, yeah. precise shit. I mean, I'd never really used any other shavers besides Manscaped. I think I tried two others that were both shit, and then I tried Manscaped, which comparatively was like really good compared to the two others. Mm -hmm. But then. I tried, like, more expensive ones, and I was like, holy shit, these ones are insane. Yeah. I got, like, this and Andis, Andes. I, f I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's, like, an actual barber, like, level shaver. Yeah. And it just doesn't nick. It doesn't tug whatsoever. And that shit is so fast. But I don't think we're going to be able to get any discount code with Andes. <laughs> it's way too mainstream. But someone asked us what our first time getting drunk was like. Yeah, I don't honestly I can't really remember that well my first time getting drunk. Bro, I was um I was fourteen. So I was a freshman in high school and I went over to my buddy's house and it's actually like a really funny story. Um Oh wait, no, this is that's I'm getting something mixed up. But I went to my buddy's house and I probably had, bro, like six or seven bush lights. So do you know what bush is? Damn, that's a good amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of Bush Light. So it's super light beer. Like, I, it's probably like 4% alcohol. Yeah. It's like water, bro. It's, yeah, it's yeah. so shit. It's super cheap. We were in high school. And like right. in, the, in the Midwest, like everyone was drinking Bush Light. Like that was the thing. Yeah. So I had like six six Bush Lights, bro. And um, I was like, I was drunk out of like out of my mind. Like I was, well, I thought I was. And right. I, obviously like I'm, I'm a freshman in high school, so maybe I was overplaying it as well, but like, I'm pretty sure I was fucked up. And you were also, didn't you weren't, didn't you used to be shorter? Yeah, I was 14. I was pro I probably weighed like one, 140. Or one yeah. 50. So your body weight was lower too. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm drinking like, and dude, I, I thought what I was, I thought I was fucked up and I was like laying down and like all my buddies were fucking with me. Cause I think they've gotten drunk before. And so like my buddy was fucking with me and he had like jumped on me and I like it like it like cracked my neck <laughs> like a little bit and I was like drunk and I just I started crying bro <laughs> I was fucking crying and like they have videos some, sometimes they'll, oh no they'll send it to me I don't have it but sometimes they'll send it to me like in the past <laughs> and it's like because it's like a snapchat memory yeah and I'm like dude well you could see like dude I was 14 so I was super fat and like dude I was a late bloomer so like I still had baby dick and shit like I was like a, I was a young ass kid yeah. I'm like crying, bro, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you broke my neck, and it was like, I was so fucked up, and then the next morning, I shit my brains out because <laughs> I had beer shits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I next morning, I shit everywhere, but yeah, that that was my first time, and then I ended up like starting to enjoy it, but that was just so weird. I don't know. 
Dude, I, I actually do remember the first time I got drunk, but it wasn't not a super crazy story. I was just in a tent with like a bunch of people. And I think I only had like three beers and I was like, damn, I'm drunk on alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> like crazy. And then I just honestly fucking loved it. And that's what's weird to me is like I can take Adderall, I can take I can drink alcohol, and I love the feeling of it, but then I don't have any desire to like do it when I don't need to. Mm-hmm. Like with the way that alcohol makes me feel, I would think that I'd be like alcoholic mode. But I don't really care to drink that much. Dude, the main thing for me is I don't like how I feel like the next I'd, day. Either the next day or that night. Or like yeah. I just feel like shit. Like I feel so like groggy and, and yeah. just not all there. And it's like I'm like I don't usually have like hungover like the classic hungover symptoms like headache and nausea. I just don't feel good. Yeah. Like so that's like kinda how I get hungover. I just feel like shit. Yeah. Just mentally? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm just like slumped over and I don't want to do anything. Well, yeah, the night after your 21st was brutal. Yeah. We just didn't do anything. I didn't physically feel that bad the next day, but just mentally I was, like, not there. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't really have a first time. My first time getting drunk was not that funny. But I have been a fucking idiot on a number of occasions <laughs> getting too drunk. But um, someone else asked about um, microplastics and chemicals in food, like, making us unhealthy and stuff. And... Do you, do you have anything, any input on that? I just know, like, isn't there, like, fluoride in the water or some shit? <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's bad for you? Well, it's weird. And there's, like, fluoride in the toothpaste. Okay, the fluoride in the water thing is actually weird because fluoride in toothpaste d- does make sense. I always make sure that when I, like, rinse my mouth, I rinse it a lot until it's, like, pure, clear water coming out because I don't want to swallow, like, even a fucking nanogram of that shit. But it does seem to, like, help with teeth a lot from the studies and shit. Like, fluoride actually does help. But the fluoride in water, if you look it up, the reason for it is, like, oh, it, if you're, like, microdosing fluoride the whole day and it's coating your teeth, that, like, helps with your teeth, you know? It, like, helps keep your teeth healthy, but it's, like... Or just floss. Yeah, or just brush your teeth twice a day or three times a day if you're that worried about it. Like, what's the point in actually putting the chemical in the water and then everyone's drinking it. I mean, it seems like that would have bad long-term effects. I don't think your core water would say that it has fluoride in it. No, it doesn't. Doesn't say. Yeah. It says purified by reverse osmosis, potassium, bicarbonate, magnesium, chloride, and calcium chloride. Yeah. I don't think that that would have fluoride in it. Only like tap water and shit. Yeah. Tap water. But it's just weird. Like that seems to be a very weird reason. Like, Oh, you're going to be drinking fluoride all the time, but it'll keep your teeth a little healthier. It's like, yo, that's my, that's my job. I'll yeah. brush my teeth. Don't you worry about me. Yeah. But, but what do they mean by like chemicals and microplastics? I don't, well, I don't know. There's like micro, well, there's like micro, wait, what? I was going to say, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I saw on TikTok this guy who, who made pork. That, that one tastes better. Yeah. He makes um, pig pig feed so he makes pig feed and he was like about to quit his job so he was like fuck it i'm about to go on tiktok and expose these motherfuckers so he's got this pig feed and i guess they it's like it's almost like a wood chip maker like they they shave it really dry and small and then the pigs eat it right and like those pigs are for pork yeah so but dude when he goes and shows this food it's bro it's not even like the plastic and shit like it's like Bro, imagine a wrapped chicken breast, like, yeah. in, in plastic. It's just, like, they leave the plastic on. <laughs> and they just throw it in yeah, there. Yeah, and then there's, like, sometimes there's garbage and shit. Like, yeah. literal garbage. And then there's, like, just a bunch of shit that I don't even know. But it's, like, vegetables and shit. But it's all old, like, from the grocery store. But it's not even unwrapped. And, bro, they, like, make it into this feed. And he's, like, running his hands through it. And it looks like wood chips. And then yeah. he gives it to these these pigs that are, that are soon to be pork and bacon and shit. Right. I don't eat pork just because fatty yeah yeah i just don't eat like i'll eat pork but i don't i'm not like you don't mm, crave it yeah I'm not yeah, like, yeah, mm, yeah yeah good like pig sausage <laughs> or whatever the fuck <laughs> or like bacon or anything like that yeah. like i'll eat turkey bacon shit all day but like i'm thinking bro if if what i'm about to eat this pig is eating this feed it's like dude holy shit yeah well the thing about shout out to ap bio for teaching me this or maybe freshman bio 
but each step in the food chain AP. Ooh. <laughs> each step in the food chain you go up i think this is actually freshman bio it's pretty common knowledge but each step in the food chain you go up the amount of like cumulative toxins increases tenfold so if you like let's say you grow some berries and some sort of toxin gets into the berries and it's like one part per billion in the berries but then like an animal eats those berries that toxin becomes like one part per million in the animal something like that so basically these cumulative toxins as you move up the food chain they add up so if you're eating something high up the food chain you're getting like a mega dose of any residual toxins that have gotten into the lower parts of the food chain for example berries or insects or anything like that so i can see the the concern about it and the microplastics i mean what is microplastics just like like pieces tiny of plastic? tiny tiny pieces of plastic that like How's it you can't food? see with your eyes well just like pollution and shit oh, okay like manufacturing pollution it gets into the water and then like little Smog algae eat it or shit, whatever yeah. and then fish eat the algae and then fucking some bird eats the fish and then some mammal eats the bird and then you eat the mammal mm -hmm. and you're getting in all those plastics you know so yeah, it definitely doesn't sound good. And Derek actually made a video on it a while ago. Or he was reacting to a video that someone else had made. And it was basically showing, like, the effect that these microplastics can have on, like, hormone levels. They really fuck with you. I mean, they're not natural chemicals at all. They, like, really can fuck with your endocrine system and stuff. But um, Derek's point... And actually, uh, I think it was female birth control it was either female birth control or these microplastics or something they got into some water supply somewhere and that water supply emptied out into some river and they found that like 90 percent of the fish in this river turned into hermaphrodites from living in that water taking in all those microplastics Wait, what's a hermaphrodite intersex like oh, the men grew ovaries and the females grew testes like a weird hormonal shit happened to these fish so definitely a red flag that i personally need to look more into because i don't know too much about it but i do think that like on a on a scientific level and on a pro science level weird foreign chemicals that our bodies are not adapted to take in are probably not a fucking good idea to eat but in terms of people blaming chemicals and microplastics and stuff on the current state of public health. And this is, this is Derek's point too, is like, how much do you think we have a 40% obesity rate because of microplastics in food versus the 21st century lifestyle? Like it's probably more just people's lifestyle is fucking horrible nowadays. Like, we used to work outside. We used to work with our hands a lot more, eat whole food diets. And now it's just like people are eating horrible food. That's like the macros are super bad. 70% of their calories come from fat. They're not getting in enough micronutrients. You know, they're not getting in their vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. They have a horrible sleep schedule because they're on their phone until like 3 a.m. And then their sleep is fucked up because of that. And then they have to wake up at 8 a.m. so they can go to their 9 to 5 and then they're sitting in an office all day, not moving around. Like, 90% of shit can probably be fixed by lifestyle and diet changes and sleep changes. And then you can look into, like, cleansing yourself of microplastics and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? I think, I think the majority of it is people just have horrible endocrine function from having horrible, unnatty lifestyles. You know? Just, like, sleep, which I'm personally... You know, I can't say that I have a perfect sleep schedule, but it's also kind of different with me because I artificially regulate my hormones. So, yeah. you know, my sleep, bro, my sleep's pretty shit. Like, well, it's been better now because of like growth and stuff. But before it was like, I would be waking up in the middle of the night and like just waking up to pee and shit. But now I don't yeah. wake up to pee, which is weird. So. Well, but your actual sleep schedule wasn't too, too bad. You were going to bed at, like, 2, waking up at, like, 10 a.m. Yeah, or so. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's certainly not horrible. If I wake up before noon, schedules. if I wake up before noon, it's, like, a good... It's a good day. Yeah, for me, it's, like, okay, I yeah. wake up before noon. Because I don't set an alarm. Well, it's weird because, and I think it's, I think it's the no fat, but for the past couple weeks, 
I've been waking up after like five hours and when I wake up, like just naturally wake up after five hours at like, you know, 8 a.m. And I'll wake up and I'll be like awake, like ready to go. And I think it's my body being like, bro, you have to go breed. You haven't nutted in three weeks. Like you have to go, go have sex, yeah. you know, versus when you're jacking off all the time. It's like you can sleep through the night because your body's in no rush to get anywhere, you know. So I'm going to have to start supplementing with dream or something like that. That's been the only downside so far is just the sleep is like you're just horny all the time. So your body like wakes you up. But sleep is definitely the most overlooked and most important aspect of health. And it's so overlooked. Think more than diet? I think diet is probably number one. I think diet is just as important, but it's less overlooked. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think everyone kind of knows, like, diet's really important, and they know just how important it is, but I don't think people, for the most part, understand just how important sleep is, and that's not just getting eight hours. It's also, like, waking up naturally with no alarm when your sleep cycle is naturally done. So what I've bought to help me with that, not sponsored, Derek actually told me about it, is it's a, it's a sunrise simulation lamp. So you set an alarm, let's say I set it for like 11.30 a.m. And this lamp, like my room's completely dark at night because I have curtains up and stuff, but this lamp will come on at 11 and it'll be very dim. And then over the course of 30 minutes up till 11.30, it will get brighter and brighter and brighter until it's like super fucking bright in my room to simulate the sun rising. And then the alarm on it is just like nature noises, like birds and stuff like that. And I wake up peacefully because it's... Bro, like, why didn't you tell me about that? I need that. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought I did tell you about that. Maybe you did. Yeah. Did you get on Amazon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Derek told me about it. Because I'm fucking stupid, bro. I was like, Derek, what I need is I need some mechanical arms that will open my curtains over the course of 20 minutes to let the <laughs> sunlight in. He's like, bro, you can just get a lamp that does the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to need that. But it's like super bright. Like it's orange light to simulate the, the sun. And it's like, it will wake you well, up. Well, my curtains aren't big enough to keep my room dark in the morning. Yeah. But do you think... That's actually that's apparently really important, is having, like, blackout curtains. I'm going to get two sets of curtains. Like, I'm going to get ones that go over the entire outside, and then I'm also going to try to block off the window itself. Because, like, you're super sensitive to any sort of light in the morning. And I think that might be one of the reasons I'm waking up, is a little bit of light is able to get into my room versus at at the the old house um it was basically 100 percent dark in the morning yeah same so and when i lived at home home i had these really thick like old old style proper curtains that just kept my room completely pitch black no matter the time of the day and that's like super important so i think that might be part of the reason i'm like waking up and it's not good i can notice it throughout the day that i'm just like sluggish and there's no reason I should be like that. It, I almost said 21. I'm 22 now. I'm going to need new curtains. And I got to get that lamp. I'll, yeah, I'll hook you up with that lamp, bro. Um, Someone said roid shaming. And we haven't really talked about roid shaming that much. But, like, what is roid shaming? If you had to define it. Like, people discrediting you for... for Like, people being like, oh, you only have that physique because you're on gear. That's what I would consider roid shaming. Yeah. That, but also... I don't mind that, though, because that's just... Ig like, I know I'm right, so it's like... <laughs> like, that's just ignorant. Yeah. But I feel like part of roid shaming is also, like... You're, you're like, a cheater for using roids. Like, you wouldn't have that if you didn't use roids. You're cheating. I'm and it's cheating like in I'm, what, bro? Yeah, exactly. I'm cheating at life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if I'm not, if I'm not competing, yeah. like, am I cheating? And if you're not competing in a natural show... Right, exactly. Yeah. Then what the fuck are you cheating at? Yeah. I would say I'm cheating at life because I'm 10 times more aesthetic than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better and like good looking and confident. But yeah, I mean, I, I've never really gotten the, the whole cheating thing yeah, because it's like, bro, I'm not I'm not competing in an, any natural shows and I don't plan to. But. I mean, how mad can you really get? You know, I get why fat people would be mad at fat shaming because they know it's bad. 
but roid shaming is is essentially just like you look better than you should. Yeah, and I'm gonna shame it's, you it's, for it's, it. It's it's a it's a it's a jealousy thing. It yeah, definitely roots back to people being jealous, jealous and envious. Yeah, but some people like have a moral stance against like using steroids at all. It's like, bro, it's my personal choice. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you, why would you care at all? Yeah, <laughs> you know. But Lex gets roid shamed even though he's natty, and people yeah. hate to hear that. People still don't think that Lex is natty. Even though Greg Doucette came out with a video saying that he wasn't natty, but then he said, listen, if Lex goes to his powerlifting meet and breaks his PRs or does like really, really well and looks really good, I will retract my statement and say that he's natty. And that's exactly what Lex did. He went, PR'd on everything. Passed the drug or, test. Or close to PR and passed the drug test and looked fucking amazing. And he got his own separate like blood panel done on top of that the day after and greg came out and said you're right i was wrong lex is natty and there's still people that like don't believe him so yeah can't satisfy well i saw i saw some comment i would say like lex is fucking like he's big for Mm -hmm. a natural or like just in general he's big yeah and like i trained with him but you can tell in the video i'm not putting myself on a pedestal like compared to lex like i'm like he's definitely 10 times more aesthetic than i am but you could i wouldn't say that like I think you're pretty aesthetic, bro. He, he <laughs> thanks, man. But like he, like he's really, really aesthetic, and he's big. He's got like broad shoulders and shit. Mm-hmm. He looks good. But I saw like a few comments being like, like because I was bro, my my physique was fucking peaked when I was in yeah, LA. Yeah, like it was primed. It's it's a little fucked up right now because I'm like a, I'm watery as shit because I was eating, eating on yeah, meals. Yeah, I was eating so much and shit, so it's catching up to me. But there, I was I was peaked. And I saw some comments being like, not like not necessarily the size of like the size difference between Tushin and Lex because him and I aren't that different in like muscle, like size. Proportionally, yeah. yeah. But like just the look that I had, you it's can the gear look. Yeah, it's the gear look like that you yeah. can tell. It's like the vascularity and just like the dryness and yeah. just the fullness. The fullness, while simultaneously being that dick skin shredded and dry and vascular. It just yeah. gives it away. It's it's the gear look. It's yeah. just a certain look that Lex doesn't have. He, like he has the size and the proportions to be like, okay, that's definitely controversial. Yeah, but he doesn't have like that ge- the look, the, the cosmetic look that yes. gear gives you. He, if and he, I don't think people understand that. If he gets to gear size, he wouldn't. He he doesn't have that gear shreddedness. And when he gets gear shredded, he doesn't have the gear fullness. Mm-hmm. You know, and when he gets the gear vascularity. He doesn't have one of the other variables. Like he always loses one. Because that's, that's what happens when you're. That's what happens when you're natty. Natural. Yeah, you're gonna lose some fullness when you shred. Dude, down. that's why I think he would look. If he were to do anything, I would just love to see him do like a test, test. and var. Yeah. Because he would be full, and then that var would like come, lean him out. Yeah, lean yeah. him out and combat the water from the test, so he would have that dry look. Like I think, he, like yeah. something like a test and var for him would be fucking dope. Yeah. I would I, love, know. I would love to see that. I know. I try not to convince him anymore because I think he's pretty set on on being on being natty for a bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think forever though. Yeah, I think probably eventually not come around. Well, once well, his test knows? is once his test is shot at like thirty. Yeah, well, he'll definitely get on TRT eventually. Yeah, but whether or not he'll do like I think everyone should get on TRT honestly. Yeah, at a certain age. Yeah, maybe not as early as us, but um, but it's yeah, it's still insane to me that people they just can't let that go. And it's like when you see him, when you see him posed in a picture or posing in a vid, he looks nuts. But it's just that relaxed when he's fully relaxed, he's big, but he just doesn't have that certain look that mm-hmm. that you were talking about. And it's like, yeah, I can just tell by looking at him that he's natural, but I also know him, obviously. So that's different. But um, we already talked about that. Not being able to get hard when you need to. That's a question that somebody had. You got any advice, bro? See Alice? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I mean, I've never had a problem getting it up. Actually, when I was on DECA, when I was on DECA and test, I was having, at the very beginning, because obviously I'm bringing in a new compound. I brought in a 19 nor. So at the very beginning, I was like, yo, my dick is like, I'm not, I'm having these like three quarter erections. Yeah. Um, but then we like figured that shit out and like my estrogen was through the roof, so that's why. Right, right. But 
I don't know, maybe get some bloods done. If you if you're not getting erections when you need to, or like if you don't wake up with morning wood and shit like that, like I'm and not you're saying, young. yeah, I'm not saying you have to wake up every single day with with a boner, but like if you're not doing it at least like two three times a week, like I would say that's yeah. a pretty good indicator that you probably have something messed up in your hormonally, head. yeah. And it doesn't have to be rock hard, but if like if it's just completely soft every single day when you wake up, that's one thing. But if you're waking up, because he said not being able to get hard when I need to. Yeah. So it sounds so maybe like you're getting not. morning wood. You can get hard when you jack off or whatever, but when you need to, like with a girl, you're having trouble getting hard, which to me sounds like a more mental thing. Anxiety probably, bro. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just something mentally that you need to overcome. But on top of that, doing semen retention and taking Cialis, even if mentally you're kind of anxious... That that combo is just gonna fucking override the anxiety, and also you you're probably like, you're probably fucking yourself up because you're think you're already going into a situation with a girl where you're like, fuck, am I gonna be able to get it up? Yeah, and then you're overthinking it, and you're like, please work, like, and then that's probably not doing it any good either. Right. So maybe just try to not think about it as much, and then, but yeah, like I said, if you're not getting like boners and stuff, bro, there was a point in time where I wasn't having, like, I didn't have a random boner. It was like. More of the, when we first moved into the old house. Mm-hmm. So, like, winter of last year, bro, I was never getting random boners. Now mm-hmm. I get them. Yeah. But I was never, and I was, like, low-key, like, bro, I haven't, I was telling Eric. I remember I would be like, bro, I don't remember the last time I had a random boner. Yeah. And so, hormonal issues, but now I'm good. Yeah. and But if it is a mental thing, and you're overthinking it, if you go in to, like, you know, have sex with someone... And you know in the back of your head, I haven't jacked off in weeks and I'm on Cialis. Sometimes that even mentally can give you the boost that you need because it like makes you confident that it'll you'll be able to get it up. You know what I mean? Versus if you're not on it, you could get in your own head. But someone else said, um, someone else asked for position tips for the first time. You can't really go wrong with, with just a classic missionary, I yeah. would say. And then just keep it simple the first time. Yeah, I would say like the most simple and easiest are missionary and then probably doggy. The ones where you're doing the 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 movement, the movement is probably the best just because especially if she's newer, um, you don't want to put that type of pressure on her to be like get on top, get on and top, do and, a 360. Yeah, because because some girls do get really insecure if they've never been on top. They're like, fuck, how do I do this? Yeah. So I would just like and honestly just talk about it before like it's not awkward to talk about it and be like what do you like or what do you like what are you good at what do you feel comfortable doing but if she's inexperienced and she doesn't know then yeah missionary can't really go wrong there and then bro missionary prone prone bone that's what i found out the name of the is that what it is prone bone i guess that's the informal i thought it was face down ass up that's what i was calling it yeah that's what i was oh that's what you called it yeah okay and that's what i called it and it it made sense yeah she understood it yeah, I mean, it sounds right, but it's just a lot of syllables. Based but on. if you told a girl, hey, get into prone bone position, she might look at you funny. Yeah. So maybe just say face down, like, just say face down. Or just say flip the fuck over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, that's that's a pretty easy one. That, missionary doggy, those are, like, pretty standard. Bro, when you do missionary, put pillow under her lower back. Yeah, or under um, her hips. Yeah, under her hips. Because that does something with, like, changes up the angle, and then you can yeah. get more up yeah. where, like, the, the good spot is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we want to get into some of these funny-ass yeah, stories? Yeah, yeah. So we put, you... up a, we put up another Modcast story. I airdropped it to you. Yeah. We put up another Modcast story, but this time the question of the day was your mm. most embarrassing stories and this time, to be, make it a little bit more professional, James went went ahead and, and grabbed a I few. I just found some funny ones, but I haven't I haven't Holy. leaked them to Sush. Yeah, so, the, like, I don't know any of them. But we <laughs> asked you guys your most embarrassing story. Wait, should we tell us tell ours first? Yeah, sure. Okay. I got mine written yeah. down. What's yours? <laughs> you want me to go first? All right. Um, I was probably, like, 14. I think I was 14. <laughs> oh, bro. I was watching porn and yeah, I was 14 years old. So I was young and I guess my mom didn't know that I was like jerking off, jerking off. Well, yeah, that, but also 
I don't know, for whatever reason, she just like busted into my room to ask me something. She wasn't trying to catch me in the act or anything. And I just fully had my dick in my hand. And it was like, I like, as the door was opening, I like pushed it down into the side, but there was like porn on the, on the computer. And she was, she managed to walk all the way over because she wasn't really like looking at me. She kind of just walked in to like ask something. And then she was standing right fucking next to me. And that's when she put it together that like I was hiding my dick down here and there was porn on the screen. And she just was like, kind of, it fucking hit her. And she's like, oh my God, I'm sorry. And just turned around and walked yeah. out. Dude, I was mortified. I was so that's fucking That's something looking back on it where it's like, Oh, that's not that embarrassing, but at the time, at bro, the time that's it was horrible. Embarrassing. And this it was so embarrassing that like I walked over to her room like 2 minutes after and I confessed to her that I had smoked weed for the first time, literally just because I wanted her to be thinking about that and not the fact that she Holy just walked shit. in on me. And I was like, "Okay, I need to hit her with something that is going to be even worse than the fact that she just walked in on me. So I walked over and I'm like, hey, mom, I just want to tell you I, I smoked weed today for the first time. I'm sorry, which was actually true. And I was like, yeah, I just I, I had to tell you. And she was like not happy about it, which I was happy about. The fact that she was like not cool with it means like that's what she's thinking about now and yeah. not the fact she just caught me jerking it. Dude, I have a similar story. It's not my most embarrassing story, but I have a similar story. I know my mom's not watching, so I don't really care. But I was like, dude, I don't know why, but I was like, I was young and I was um, jerking off in my bathroom or out in, I don't know why, I probably because I was really young as my mom like barged in because she, well, she didn't barge in. She like hit a little knock and then came in. Oh yeah. But it's the bathroom. So I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> and right. I didn't lock it though, like an idiot. Mm-hmm. And but as she knocked, I immediately stopped, and then she came in, so I was kind of, I was just, like, chilling with, like, I was, like, it looked like I was taking a shit. She was, like... Did you do one of those arm yeah, corrupt things? I was, yeah, I was, I had my, my, my elbows on my knees. Yeah, yeah, And I had my phone right here that I just, like, exited out, <laughs> and she was, like, why are you taking so long? And I was, like, I'm playing Clash of Clans. <laughs> like, that was the, and it was, like, the first thing that came to my head, like, Holy shit. she said, why are you taking so long? And I... It was point one millisecond. I was like playing cuts climbs, like, <laughs> like, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Did she that not was know? Scary. I don't. I have no clue. Well, I mean, now I, she does. Yeah, now she does. But <laughs> holy shit, bro, that's funny. But my most embarrassing story is, I was like very young. I was like, we were at summer camp, and I already told I told you this, but we were at summer camp. I was probably in in elementary school at this time, like really, really young. And my sister, she would always like pick on me because she's the older sister. So we're at this summer camp and like I'm with my friends and like she and this was at the time like my sis my sister was four years older than me so she's probably in middle school and I was in elementary school and pantsing was like a really big thing like right, pulling, right, right. pulling someone's pants down and so you would think I'd be like oh my dick came out but so she pants me and I was wearing these un- this underwear that had like little like bugs all over it not bugs but like. It had painted on, yeah, painted printed. On, print, yeah. It was like bug underwear, and it had like <laughs> like cockroaches and beetles and just like a <laughs> bunch of fucking bugs. I don't know why I had them, bro, That's but it was funny. just like a bunch of insects. Yeah, and then like everyone saw my bug underwear, and I was like, I was so fucking embarrassed. Did people comment on it? Or I don't remember. Like- I don't. Remember. I just remember being so embarrassed and pulling my pants up. Th- pulling my pants up and crying and then I like went home and told my mom about it and she was like it's not okay Shelby like whatever <laughs> but I would at that point bro I would rather have my my dick come out than your than, bug than underwear my fucking bug underwear bro <laughs> Ugh. but yeah that was probably the most embarrassed that I've ever been so we got we got this one that says <laughs> this will make you cringe this isn't we tried to pick like not super sexual ones but one of them is still sexual <laughs> This will make you cringe, but I was with my girlfriend at the beach and we brought our bikes. Her bike didn't fit in the trunk, so I had to put one in the back seat. I have a small car, so I had to jam it in. Anyways, I tried to squeeze the door shut and ended up closing the door on the tip of my fucking dick. I screamed so loud and people looked. Honestly, one of the most painful things that's oh happened to me. Oh, fucking God, dude. Because <laughs> if you close the door on your, on your like finger oh, before, yeah, and it like, I mean, people have broken their finger like yeah. that. Bro, imagine the tip of your dick. Holy shit. I bet it felt like lightning. Dude, he said Jeez, he screamed. Bro. 
I bet that was a high pitched scream too. Holy Full out shit. girl scream. Lucky it wasn't his balls. Jeez, but low key yeah. a tip. Like, when have you ever been hit in your in your dick? Yeah. Not your balls. You hit, just just the tip, the tip gets hit and it hurts. It's very it's very it's like lightning, dude. It literally yeah, feels yeah. like lightning. Yeah, I know. Bro, I know some guy in high school who put a fork, like a fork prong in there, and he said it felt like fucking thunder, like lightning and thunder. <laughs> Wait, why? Why do you do that dude, shit? Dude, I don't know. If, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, someone says. And this one I read, and I didn't even laugh because I just felt for this guy. I was like, oh, my God, that is horrible. I was just about to get sloppy toppy right after school from some girl. I get in her car. We pull up to the baseball fields. We start kissing. I pull out my soft dick, and she goes, wow, that's tiny. Dot, dot, dot. Not everyone's a, grow- not everyone's a shower. Grower gain on top. Yeah, I'm a grower. Yeah, I'm definitely a grower. Cheese, bro, dude. If a girl said Yo, that, fuck I, that girl, I know dude. what the fuck. I'd be like, the fuck, like, does she just think that shit's funny? Yeah, like, oh, we're just gonna laugh it off and continue. I'd be like, get the fuck out of my car. Yeah, I would literally be like, bitch. I don't even know. Actually, I'd be so. <laughs> I'd be I like, would be bitch. really embarrassed though. Well, it's also kind of weird that you guys were kissing, but your dick was still fully soft. Yeah, dude. Maybe once I start, head. bro, I'll touch a female or I'll smell a female, bro, and I like. <laughs> And, like, I'm, like, ready yeah. to go, dude. Yeah. The pheromones. Dude, stim dick, like, at the gym, when you're training and you're on stimulants, especially Adderall. Like, if you take Adderall because you're tired and you want to have a good session and you want to, like, wake up. And you take, like, Gorilla on top of it. And you're training so the blood's going everywhere else in your body. Sometimes I pull my dick out to pee and I'm, like, bro, if it's, if someone ever, like, snuck up on me and, like, saw this shit, I would have to explain myself and be like listen man it doesn't always look like it's weird it's weird how it looks it's like it's like half boner but like because you're stimmed out i'm like like there's been times where like where i was pushing the clen pretty high and i would like go to the bathroom and my it was like soft it was like (laughs) it was like soft girth but like the length was like it was like a 50 percent boner Really? Yeah, but it was like hype, like super. I was like really cold, like my because when you take high stim, like you're cold. Yeah. Like I get really cold, and my balls were shrunken up, and like it just looked like it was just looked so weird, bro. <laughs> like, no, dude. When I'm like, especially on Adderall at the gym, my it is zero percent hard. It's negative percent hard. Like that shit goes <laughs> into my body to the point where the skin of my dick like gets wrinkly because it gets so. Yeah. My dick gets so short that, like, the skin gets fucking wrinkly, and I'm like, holy shit. And sometimes I just have to, like, grab the tip and fucking pull it out a little bit, give it a little shake. Yeah, and be like, just so it works come properly. back out here, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, come here. <laughs> but, damn, I'm sorry for you, bro. If you're listening right now, that I is... I hope you still don't talk to that girl. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Took a shit in the middle of a field where an Eminem concert was. It was, like, 12 a.m., and people were leaving to go home, either drunk or high. No portable, no porta potties. So just casually bent over, dropping one with people walking past, and my friend standing like a bodyguard in front of me. <laughs> That's a he good shit, friend right he there. Shit in a, in a he port. just shit in the middle of a field with like people walking by him, because there were no porta potties. He was at a concert. Jeez, I would have, I would not be able to do that. Really? No. I mean, when I'm not comfortable, bro, I don't shit for days, three, four days. Like I didn't shit when I was in LA, when in California. I was in California for four days and didn't shit. You didn't shit once. I shit at the airport. As I was leaving. Holy so fuck. So four days. And think about all the food I was eating, like the shitty food yeah. and like drinking and stuff. It was I, just accumulating inside of you. Yeah. I That's came crazy. Back, I came back and took laxatives. Because there's other people that get like anxiety shits. Like they don't feel comfortable and then their bowels get going because it's like fight or flight. I would I rather know. have that. I would yeah. rather have that because I feel, bro, when I don't poop, I can feel it like. My colon is just... You're like, just bloated. If, if I got face. an MRI, you'd probably see all the shit. Man. Yeah. Uh, well, I've gotten... I got an x-ray before because I had this really bad stomach pain. And they wasn't... They weren't sure if I, like, had broken my hip or something or, like, hurt my hip. And they took an x-ray and they found out it was super compacted poop. It showed up on the x-ray. Yeah, I saw... There was a viral, a viral tweet of this girl. She got an x-ray because she, like, broke a rib. Like, the first thing was, like, her breaking a rib on, like, whatever fucking video it was. She did. She fell or something. Yeah. The next slide was the x-ray. 
and it went viral because people were like, bro, because you could see the shit. <laughs> and it's like, bro, she hasn't shit in weeks. Like, yeah. that's what people were saying. Yeah, no, this was like one little patch, but it showed up like a bone. It was like yeah. so hard. Holy and I shit. ended up, I they prescribed me this um, like Miralax or Purelax or whatever the fuck it's called. And I didn't know. I think I've told this story before, but I didn't know that that stuff takes like eight plus hours to work. So I took it. I expected it would work in like 30 minutes. So then I took another dose and it still didn't work. So then I'm like, oh, this shit's bunk. So I think I ended up taking like three capfuls of the Miralax. And then I also took two Smooth Move teas. Smooth Move is like a natural, but it, it, it works. Like it makes you shit. And nothing was working. And I was kind of getting worried again. Like I'd have to get my poop surgically removed or something. And then anyway some hours pass, I go to market basket with my dad and all of those laxatives just hit me at once. And I'm like, dad, I'm literally going to shit my pants in this aisle right now and had to sprint to the bathroom. And l- like one of those where you just sit down and the second yeah. your butt hits the seat, it's just explosion. And there was a guy in the bathroom and I remember him going, <laughs> <laughs> like he heard, he heard it and he literally just did a little laugh. Uh. And then I was in there for about 40 minutes because my dad finished shopping and he came in. He's like, how you doing? And I swear by the end of it, pure smooth move tea was just coming out of my butt. Bro, I, there was you, like, I bet you felt so good, though. I mean, I felt light. Yeah. <laughs> felt like I could jump an extra foot higher. Holy shit. But yeah. Bro, <sighs> what is with? I feel like I always see TikToks of girls like they'll be pooping in the in the stall and then they'll like they'll be recording themselves and the person next to them the girl it's like sounds like a waterfall bro like Jeez. what is what, i feel like girls i think girls shit more aggressively than guys yeah i think so too because one their diet's probably not like yeah they got they're, that they're starbucks like, diet yeah they're getting on. like 30 grams of protein a day and like <laughs> whatever and high fat high carb yeah but i feel like they're always just pooping like they just poop viciously <laughs> like and it sounds like i've seen i've heard some pretty fucking <laughs> Some wild TikToks. Yeah. Jeez. It should be... Girls shouldn't be allowed to poop, bro. <laughs> so unfeminine. Such I like it, shame. though. I, I like, like when, girls pooping? I like when girls poop and fart because it means that they're they're around... They're comfortable enough around me to be... To well, show yeah, their that's most, true. Like, that's their most... They hate it. Like, yeah. they, they're like, oh, no, it's not... That's not woman-like or whatever. But I personally like it because it shows that, like... They're comfortable. really comfortable. I'm more of a bitch about it than Hannah is. Hannah doesn't give a fuck and she'll like joke about she'll like fart and like laugh at it and I'll do the same thing. I don't care about farts, but I don't want her like coming in the bathroom when I'm pooping or like having the door open, but it's more for her own sake. Like I know the toxic waste my body can produce and I don't want her like breathing that in and dying. Yeah. You know, and smelling that shit. Yeah. Sure. I just I feel bad about it versus with her. She's got little girl poops, so she doesn't really care. But that just about wraps it up. That's yeah, a good. That's say. a good topic to leave off on. <laughs> I'm gonna say, but oh shit, we forgot. Yeah, Anabar we plug. didn't plug Anabars, but if you guys want to get some, you guys already know the drill. Not There's sure. still a shit ton in stock. Yeah, they're sure. like they have a they have new warehouse and stuff like we talked about. So also wearing Vical hoodie, broke it back out. Yes, Vical dropping in September, and I really do think that's true. I'm not just blue balling you, but um. For the sake of transparency, shipping is going to take um, 25 days from the moment they ship it till the moment it arrives at the shipping facility where it can be distributed to all you guys. So um, I think manufacturing finishes in like three or four days and then it gets and then it gets shipped out like the next day. So I'm crossing my fingers that it makes it by the end of September because that would be nice. But regardless, Vical very soon. Make sure you guys look out for that. That shit's gonna what? Sell, that shit's gonna sell out. I hope so. I hope it sells out quick, but not too quick because I need time to make the new drop too, the winter drop. I give it. I give it a. I give it a week. That sounds reasonable. I give it a. I give it no. Depending depending how fast shipping is, because once people are like start posting in it. True. Because. If it doesn't sell out in the first day, then it's not going to like sell out in the third day. I feel right, like right. it'd be it, it's either going to sell out the first day or it's going to sell out like a week later when once people get it, they start posting it and people are like, "Yo, these are sick. I want more." 
Yeah. Or like their homie sees it and they're like, yo, what stringer is that? Right. So true. Either it's going to be the first day or like a week and a half later. Well, it kind of sucks because we wanted to hype up the drop. We actually got two separate orders. One is a big one that that's going to all you guys. And then we got a smaller one that's getting shipped to my house that I'm just shipping to like friends and family and stuff so that they can like promote it or post about it if they want to. It wouldn't be like a sponsored thing. It would just be like, you know, kind of build hype around it. But I don't think I'm even going to have time to do that. Because I want to just drop it immediately. Like, obviously, I'm still going to... I thought sh- they were going to send that shit early because it's less... It's a Yeah, lower- bro, so did I. <laughs> but fucking co- C-word supply chain and yeah. stuff, so... It's going to take a little bit longer. But I'm still going to ship it out to friends and family. But it's not going to be enough time to, like, hype up the drop or anything. So we'll see. We will see. It's a lot of fucking clothes. I'll be very surprised if it sells out in one day. I'll be extremely surprised. You guys what? heard it. Sell it the fuck out. And f- wait, you have, did Code you make suit. hoodies? Did you make hoodies? Yeah. You're wearing one. So like you did, you. We, yeah, we made a good amount. Because low key, I mean, if you would have dropped this shit two months ago, maybe the hoodies wouldn't go because it's like the summer, but winter is coming up. Yeah. Like hoodies fall, are going to sell so out. Hoodies are going to yeah. be fucking huge. I know. Especially because they're nice ass hoodies. Yeah. Is this too. the, is this the correct one? Because I know this yeah. is a sample, a sample. That's a large. You're wearing a yeah. large. So it's like sewed and shit embroidered or embroidered yeah <laughs> it's sewed and shit <laughs> established 2020 yes sir all right thank you guys for watching we appreciate the support if you guys and sorry this buy, is a saturday upload we're sorry yeah it was my birthday sorry guys and we also forgot until like the night before and then we were like oh shit dude, the weeks go by so fucking fast it's I like know. dude we have a we like it's thursday and I'm like, bro, tomorrow's we Friday. To film a pod. Shit, we we like, yeah, and we then, gotta be more on top of that, to be honest. Yeah, that's our fault. But if you guys want to support us with Anabars, you can use code MOG, save 10%, I think. And that's on the well, the link will be in the description. And if you guys want to support us individually, code Sush or code Jam for Young LA and, and Gorilla um, to support us individually. So Yo, we should have talked about the turk drop, but uh, it's too late. Oh, it sold out in like two seconds. Yeah, and that and when when we tell you guys it was a huge restock, it fucking was. And it really. I, sold I was out getting that blamed. Fast. I was getting blamed. Like, yeah, I had people DMing me, bro. You said it was a huge restock on your Snapchat story, blah blah blah. And I'm like, bro, it was. Like this was no fucking joke. I can't tell yeah. you guys. We can't tell you guys the numbers, but it was no fucking joke. It was a huge restock compared. It was to the other orders ones. of magnitude larger than the last one. Yeah, like, very, it was very, very more. <laughs> very more. So I don't know. But the next one is going to be even bigger, like significantly bigger, but it's still probably going to sell out in like 15 minutes. So I don't know what to tell you guys. This is just everyone wants it. You know, it's a hot commodity. So um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next one. Peace out. Peace.